Well, unfortunately, we had a little technical glitch, but I don't know where we lost you guys. But essentially, I was saying is once they reach a year old, we kind of breathe a sigh of relief and that's generally when we know that they've done really well and they can pretty much take care of themselves by that age. Um, they're able to be resourceful enough to stay out of trouble and, and find the food that they need. So he's almost there, uh, another four or five months, um, and he'll be pretty much good to be able to survive on his own. So she's really done the hard work to get past a certain point. And, you know, the, the thing about it is what always stands out for me as, as for Tandi as a mother, and it's something that I touched on a bit this morning, but she's very good at moving her cubs to places of maximum security in terms of the male leopards that are hard around her. As I mentioned just now, male leopards are probably one of the single, well, they are the single biggest threat to, to leopard cubs um, and are responsible for the highest rate of mortality amongst leopard cubs. And what she's done so incredibly well in her life is she's always managed to somehow find a way to get to a point in her territory where she doesn't actually have too much overlapping movement of males. So if you take Tlalamba, for example, Tlalamba was born central Juma. From there, she was moving her all around that kind of central area towards Trias Dam, those sort of sections. Tingana then got ill, moved away, and Hukumuri arrived from that southwestern corner of Juma and started to push more towards the center and east. As he started to arrive, and I'll never forget this, we had him at Treehouse Dam, and she was not far away. In fact, I'll get the map now so I can actually show you exactly this movement because it's quite phenomenal to see how she did this. Um, so while our boy kind of hangs out there, we'll kind of just show this this movement and then I'll talk about him and the movements that she's done with him. But essentially, so what happened was the, the cub was born in this vulture's nest. Um, Nyala Road South is like a little blue line that comes down. So that's where the, the cub was born. So that's where Tlalamba uh, was first seen. And she moved it to the Mulawati and then was in the Mulawati for a long time. And then she started to go and she was right here where there's this little cross is where her and the cub were the one day and we had Hukumuri here at Treehouse Dam. That was in the morning. That afternoon we found Hukumuri, I can't even remember, somewhere kind of the Mulawati and she was found crossing all the way up here with the cubs. So she basically crossed the whole of Juma to here and she brought it into this area um, that you see here. There's a, you see there's this little blue drainage line. So that's where she then spent a few weeks with um, Tlalamba. In the meantime, Hukumuri kind of came all the way up and was starting to walk up Cheetah Cut Line before Tingana then started to come back and pushed Hukumuri back to um, the west a little bit. From there, she started to move Tlalamba into Torchwood a lot more and she hung around here with Tlalamba around Gwari Pan, Torchwood um, for a long period. Once Hukumuri was pushed back, then we started to see her bring Tlalamba back into Juma and then we started to see them hanging around that Mulawati kind of area again. She then left Tlalamba um, towards this sort of northern sector and she herself pushed south a little bit and was hanging around this sort of southeastern corner. She then had that litter of, uh, of cubs on that same den at Nyala Road, um, which didn't survive. She moved them a little bit towards Treehouse and this is now when Mulawati was really starting to show his presence um, and they didn't survive. And then she had this one at exactly that same den again, or well, these two, should I say at that same den. Now, because Mulawati and Hukumuri and Tingana are all kind of vying for attention along this Mulawati drainage line, they were all kind of in the area, she then has moved this cub and she's brought it all the way to the east, um, to where we are right now. This is where we're sitting, is, is at Torchwood at this rock, first rock. Um, we're at the big rocks itself. And, and she has left this cub pretty much here. Now, the only male leopard that walks around here um, that we know of is... Tingana or Mulawati, it's the only two and they kind of, even then, both of them, this is kind of the boundary, they don't really come past First Rock all that often, um, so it's a pretty safe place, she's managed to kind of move that cub into where she feels like there's the least amount of chance of male leopards finding it and avoid all of the chaos that's been happening with male leopards over the course of the last few years, which has been absolutely phenomenal to see and I've really kind of enjoyed the way that she's done it and it's really one of the reasons why she's been so much more successful than a lot of other females. Um, unfortunately for her sister Shadow, she didn't have the same luxury because she wasn't able to um, find 
any sign of, of, well, find places where she didn't have overlapping males. So she always was on the fringe of a male territory, and that led her to, unfortunately, losing a number of her cubs and deemed to be unsuccessful as a mother. It's not that. She was just, unfortunately, her territory sat in a really bad area, whereas Tandi has had the ability to adapt and change and move her territory as much as possible until such time as she can... Um, as she can find a, a way to, to kind of keep these cubs alive.